day 16. Days? Ooh, Days. this is like halfway. A little teeny I bit know. over halfway. We've crossed, we've crossed the intercontinental divide. Yeah. <laughs> of our Vlogmas. Of our Vlogmas. I mean, our New Year. Well, it's not just Vlog. Vlog, vlog vent, new vlog, New Year Vlog. <laughs> <laughs> our New Year Vlog. There we go. Vlog year. Vlog year. Our new vlog year. New vlog year. This is just going to be 15 minutes of us putting words together. Of us putting words together. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, you make me laugh. <laughs> Every day. Mission accomplished. Yay. <laughs> right. <gasps> so I'm knitting. You're knitting. Tell us what to, oh, I want to see what you finished. Oh, yeah. So I finished the head. I got to put this down. The one with the lace star thing? Yeah, the burn burn a cluster. I couldn't remember. Designed the name. by Nicole Foots of Nicole Estelle Designs. Yeah. So this is Ooh. This is it. You have and a nice it, blocking board. It's very wet um still because I didn't squeeze it out very well. So it's gonna have to dry for a few days. And mainly, but mainly um I'm blocking it because the ribbing part folded down yes. you know how it does that sure so i'm just trying to block that flat because the rest of it like it will stretch when it goes yeah. it'll on open my up noggin. on your head but i think i'm gonna give this to one of my kids nice so that was done very quick project nice. i think um whoops maybe i'm not like sure i understand theory <laughs> i don't understand either that's going off my wrist why does what did you say that triggered siri i don't know We'll have to play back and listen, but um, I think I think maybe six hours, six hour project, something like that wasn't wasn't very long. Wow, yeah. So so we had um patron knitting last night, right? And um, one of our viewers was there working on it as well. Hi Jennifer, and another one of my patrons, Joan, was getting ready to knit. Um, an Uredale sweater. I'm going to show it to you. Called Ripples. Designed by Hilly Vandersloos. Ooh. And Ooh, I like that. Wait. Isn't can... it nice? It's like boxy, loose, comfortable. Oh, I like that a lot. Kind of thing. And it uses bohus knitting, which is color work, but you also pearl. So I don't know if you can wow. see. like you get a little bit of the natural coming through. Yeah. Um, I like so that anyway, Joan was on the spring trips yeah. with us to Shetland and she picked up and I picked up and a couple other ladies actually picked up the yarn for this sweater while we were at Uradale farm and she was casting on. And I was like, well, I need to cast on too, because I've been in love with this sweater since it released. Me too. And uh, oh, I haven't seen that before. I want, that. I need one. That's like a good, knitting you know online knitting yeah kind of project so okay here's what i want to know though real quick is that is it dk no it's fingering <gasps> yay so you know why i'm so happy about that because why? okay you're like oh dear i just got this in my coffee oh no <laughs> <laughs> a loop just i put my knitting down and a loop went bloop across my coffee <laughs> you know that's a first world pro first world problem. Yeah. I have a bunch of skeins of fingering that are like all the same color that are former Pearl Together retreat skeins because oh. I didn't do a pre-order. I just ordered a truck ton, right. not knowing how many people would register. And then I had stuff left over. You see what I mean? Right. So I'm like, ooh. That would be a good so are they solid color or are they? No, but it's a light gray. Here, let me show you. This was a sock set from my first year. See, so it's like that. Ooh, nice. So it's a light lavender kind of thing with speckles. But then I had all these like black minis that went with. Uh -huh. But I have other minis because now I have a box of minis. So depending on the contrasting colors and the amounts required, I could knit that. Yeah. You oh, totally I'm excited. Could. Yeah. So this is, I mean, you can find it on Ravelry, but they also sell it on the Uradale site too. Ooh. So either, either place. You can I, so it. now I'm wondering, I'm going to have to go look and see how many 
contrasting colors amounts that I would need. Yeah. How many grams of the, yeah. Ooh. So it's, well, I can tell you it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's six contrasting colors, 25 gram balls for any size. Any size sweater you knit, it's a 25 gram ball in six colors. And then the, the background color is 300 grams, 350 grams, or 400 grams, depending on extra small, small, mm -hmm. medium, large, extra large. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So that's the thing. So anyway, I ca I'm casting on, I'm doing a swatch. I'm behaving. I'm doing good, a swatch. good. But are you swatching in the round? No, I'm not. But I have, um, I've used this kind of yarn enough times that I, it's, I know it's the same. I have pretty spot on. Okay. Within my gauge, I am pretty spot on, like no matter the circumstance. Within your knitterly world that is right. in. Right. But you should swatch in the round if you're doing something in the round. And I have a video for speed swatching in the round. Yes. So there. Yep. So, okay. and I thought about doing like a leg warmer project or something because mm -hmm. I love leg warmers, but. It's so 80s. It's very 80s. They're so back now though, Jana. Like they're, oh. they're back as fitted, more fitted against your leg as opposed to slouching down. I wouldn't know these things. Because everybody's leg... wearing like Chelsea boots and boots and things like that now. See, what's Chelsea your... boots are like the ankle boots that come up a little bit up your leg. And a lot of the time they have like a elastic insert on the side of them. Sometimes they just zip up or whatever. Oh, anyway, okay. People are wearing leg warmers with them. Okay. And being adorable. Mm. They're cute. Okay. So. I have no idea about these things. My idea of a leg warmer is a Carhartt overall. <laughs> Just saying. Very effective leg warmer. It's my Very leg effective. warmer. Yeah, it does the job. I'm sure my college age daughter is cringing right about now. <laughs> <laughs> but I get it. That's cool. Actually, that's not true. My leg warmers are a thing for ballet class for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. And my younger is into that. So yeah. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. So what is the gauge you're aiming for there? Um, so she recommends a 3.25 aiming for where is it? Where is it? 23 stitches and 34 rows. So five and th three quarters stitches per inch. Interesting. Okay. Roughly. So yeah. three. Three and a half millimeters, is that what you said? She recommended 3.25. So that's a U.S. size three. Yes. Okay. Cool. So that's what I'm working on. And then, yeah, we'll see. We'll take it from there. There's a lot of, uh, and we talked about this last night because Joan didn't quite get gauged. She's a okay. little bit off. And yeah. so she's trying to figure out how to do, what to do, because she likes the fabric she got uh, when she's right, washed. Right, right, right. Now, this is a very boxy, big sweater. So she was trying to figure out, like, how do I figure out if it's, if I need to go up a size or if I stay the same size, whatever. And so we were talking about how you can, uh, I think Connie was saying you can just multiply your gauge by the number of stitches and find out how you know do the math and figure out how big around it would be at your gauge and then go from there you know so yeah so um we'll I asked one of the sweater designers when we did we did a uh the after the rain sweater the stripy mm -hmm. one I made my daughter and I asked her about that you know can you do that and she said well if you're within five to ten percent of the gauge probably you could do that but it's not proportionally going to be the same all over so right for example you like could. casting on the neckline you might you're going to proportionally go up yeah. or down depending on your gauge so let's say you cast on i'm just using this as an example 120 stitches for your neckline 10 percent of that is 12 However, if you look across the sizes, it's going to be, you know, like maybe a large and an extra large is the same cast on. 
because your neck doesn't change that much, but maybe your bust area does change that much. So it isn't proportional all over. Right. Yeah. It's much easier to do these when the designer gives measurements instead of like numbers of rows or whatever, you know, because you can just be like, however, and yeah, whatever. And yeah, yeah. you definitely have have to be more aware. Yeah. I'll have to see if that size, that uh, pattern is size inclusive enough for me. Yeah, the Not a small person. So the extra large, it's she's a European designer, so everything's just centimeters. So oh, the extra right. large is 135 centimeters. Divided by two and a half for inches. So about four feet around, I think. 135 divided it's by a meter two and, and a half. third. It's about a meter and a third. So about four feet around. I was just going to get a calculator. Yeah, we could do that too. 135 divided by 2.5 centimeters per inch equals 54 inches. Nice. Yeah. I'm excited. I could knit that. I might, I'm going to have to mess around with the length. I think I might need to lengthen it a little bit. Mm -hmm, Me too. We're tall. Yeah. So yeah, then you just got to make sure you have enough yarn. Yeah, I tend to buy an extra, yes, strategically buy extra yarn as I buy them because I know I'll use it. I'll use it in a hat or whatever. It's mm. fine. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. Yeah, I was, I had a class uh, with Elizabeth Johnston who last year, in last year's annual, not the most recent one, but the one before, designed a lace cardigan that I thought was gorgeous and I bought the yarn for and I bought an extra ball and I'm so glad I did because when she she brought that to the class as one of her like show and tell items and it came like to my belly button yeah and if you like it's the perfect length for Elizabeth but she comes up to about my shoulder so (laughs) right (laughs) right and that damn sweater that I finished for my mom I was glad I had enough yarn for that same She's yeah. not as tall as I am, but she wanted a cover your bum sweater cardigan. Yeah. She wanted it to be longer than the pattern for sure. Cause she likes cover right. your bum kind of things. Yeah. So, yeah. So you got it. This is the joy of knitting though, is you get to play around with these things. Do you do what makes you happy. You are yeah. the boss of your knitting. You're the boss of your knitting. Right. Cool. So that's my show and tell from the last 24 hours. What have you been up to? Okay, well, I've been knitting and knitting and knitting, and I'm about to finish a row, so I'm stalling a little bit. But I will say <laughs> that because this grading, because this gradient at the moment is super smooth, like you really can't uh-huh. tell the difference between what I knitted yesterday and what I knitted today or the day before, because it's really smooth. However, because of that, I brought uh, three extra minis so you could kind of see where we're going with the whole thing. Yes. And it's also smooth because I've been taking and alternating some rows as I'm getting to the end of the first mini, I'll alternate okay. a row or two just to kind of make sure yeah. that things are, are flowing smoothly from one mini to the next. Okay, I have like four more stitches. <laughs> well, you know how that is when you get something a little larger on your needles, you're like, well, I don't want to set it down just yeah, yet. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I have to make sure that at night, if I set it on the kitchen table, I I like cover it all with a placemat <laughs> because inevitably some fat cat will come lay on it <laughs> and be all like, oh, that's so nice. I like this. I like this. Our, our person okay. is so kind to leave this for me. <laughs> my purse, my human loves me. My human. <laughs> okay. So. Like this is a little more dramatic of a shift right there, but yeah. Okay. So where we're going though now is let's see what's next. This one. Okay. And then, okay, wait. Oh yeah. And then we're getting lighter. See? Oh, okay. And more pinkish. Yeah. Which my daughter's super happy about. So we're going to lighten up and shift to the pinkish fuchsia lavender rose things like that so nice we'll see how far i get yes so where are we going ultimately does it get into blue Uh huh that's yeah it's all beachy and stuff nice yeah so 
Very yeah, nice. I think it'll kind of tie back into this like turquoisey bit here. Uh huh. Oh, I hate it when people do that. Add an IE to words. Turquoise. I just did it. Tur- I annoy myself sometimes. <laughs> think of it as a Y instead of an IE. It's much it's more. It's so bad. <laughs> I annoy myself. <laughs> okay. A Y is much more classy, though, compared to an IE. I mean, I'm also. Um, gonna finish my socks so i'm happy about that nice yeah right so cool and it's day 15 oh i should get my thingy do you have yours i do have mine and i'm just gonna say real quick while jan is grabbing hers that um westland wool sent us a coupon code so if you go back to the video where we had the interview with cecil tate that's in the show notes now oh right and also for yesterday's video mandy moore gave us a coupon code that wasn't working immediately but so if you tried it like first thing and it wasn't working go back and try it again it is working now okay why can't i find 15 we're on 16 my dear Oh, derp. <laughs> That's why. I'm like, what day is this? Hmm. Okay, found it. Okay. Show me the sticker. Let me guess. Oh, we're yeah, in Arizona. To... Okay, you'll be you'll know this one. Okay. So we have like a balloon festival. Yeah. Kind of thing. And isn't that cute? The little ball of yarn in the balloon. That is very good. Now I honestly I have no idea what that would be, but I would guess. Hey new new um whatchamacallit new mexico <laughs> yeah new albuquerque is famous for their hot air balloon festival oh i didn't know that oh, that's cool oh, okay yeah yeah there you go that's very cool and this is from mckaylee from breaking yarn <gasps> yes oh my gosh yes we had such i had a, yeah i enjoyed talking to her she has really fun yarns if you're a fan of breaking bad or better Call show Saul, uh-huh. oh she's fun yeah her entire business is is themed around that show. Yeah. Which is crazy and amazing at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Woo! That was what shocking. <laughs> wow. Oh. That's awesome. What is it? Look at her. Look at the I love her logo. And what did she name it? Uh this particular one is called Albuquerque, New Mexico. <laughs> Just straight up Albuquerque, New Mexico. I love that. Wow. Bold. Let's see, yeah, right. And now I'm seeing though that like this would really go with that really, really red that was from uh I think it was from Stefania from Three Fates Yarn, the really uh-huh. red. See, you could pair yeah. that with that. So I'm glad that I have many options that are gonna be in groups of three or four. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's great. I love that one. Oh, okay. I guess it's my turn, huh? I guess. I just started knitting again and I'm I'm in the zone. Yeah. Sorry. I have a dozen stitches to go. No, just kidding. <laughs> Day 16. Yay. More yarn. What's that? More yarn. More yarn. It is more yarn. And it's a new maker today. Ooh. And it's Laxdale yarn. Oh, right. Laxdale oh. yarn. What color is that? It's a very um it's like a purpley. Ooh. It's called Midnight. It's like a deep purpley blue. I'm trying to like Oh, there you go. There we go. That's purpley neat. blue. Love kind of that. Color. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Wow. We have a lot of yarn coming from Laxdale yarn. And we and have an interview with her in a little while. A little Yeah. Later. Is it I don't think it's tonight is. No, it's not today. No, it's, it's not later. today. But coming up, Sheila, who's just such a sweetheart. So they're I'm one of the there. newer makers there too. They have their own craft, and this is yarn from oh, their lovely. sheep. And you did let it slip that things are fair isle coming up. So yeah, I'm excited to see all the colors that will be involved it in is, the next project. It is now fair isle. Mm-hmm. So all you people who've been waiting for fair isle, this is your jam. Yay! We're getting into the fair isle. So yeah yeah cool. all right well let's cut over to mckaylee from breaking yarn in albuquerque new mexico she was a blast to talk to ha ah, see what i did there <laughs> ah, have you seen the show of course you've seen the show yeah absolutely 
Okay, guys, we'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy the interview. Bye. Bye. Welcome. We're really glad to have McKaylee on the channel. She's from Breaking Bad Yarns. Welcome to the no, Breaking oh. Yarns. Breaking Yarns. Breaking Yarn. <laughs> breaking, oh, Breaking Yarns, not Breaking Bad. Oh, sorry. That's okay. But we'll get to that part. Breaking Yarns. And you're in New yes. Mexico, right? That's correct. Albuquerque. Okay. And first thing we have to do is just say welcome. Thanks for joining us. And that's a fantastic sweater. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you. This is my painting brick sweater. It's a pattern by Stephen West. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I used um, gray matter, one of my colors um, as the main color. And then I did um, pink teddy bear, Marie Schrader. Um, oh, I'm like, I can't see it. Walter by crystal meth and hazmat suit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was only going to use four colors because I felt like that was crazy enough. But then... I couldn't decide on the I couldn't decide on the fourth color and everyone on Instagram was like use all five so <laughs> absolutely yeah well so it turned it, out it, great yeah that's amazing. that is such that pattern of his the painting breaks because I've done the shawl too mm -hmm. and I get so many comments on it and it's one of the easier knits because really? it's just lip stitch to get Super the brick easy. effect. Yep. And I, I will wear like totally complicated things, never get a comment. And I wear the painting painted brick shawl and people come up to me. I do not know and want to know more about the shawl that I'm wearing. Mm -hmm. So it's a packs a lot of punch. For yeah. And that one thing pattern. that's interesting too, maybe, I mean, I don't know if it's interesting, but this is actually my first sweater. <laughs> Oh wow. wow! I've never like I the only other sweater I ever knit before this one was one for my for my baby when I had her three years ago. So, so it was, like, yeah, so it was tiny, like tiny little like practice sweater, and then I made this. So that's amazing. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. That's yeah, really that's cool. Fun. And let's talk about Anne's sweater also. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, this one is one I got while I was on tour. I In love Shetland. to say that. Yeah. So I host knitting tours to Shetland and walked into the Shetland cool. Textile Museum and saw this one. And I have a problem uh, where I just can't leave my babies behind. So I walk into a shop <laughs> and the sweater says, I adopt me. Child. And uh, and I end up picking them up. But this is my favorite of the ones that I've gotten there. So this was machine knit actually up to the yoke part and the sleeves. And then they join it up and a local knitter will do the the yoke, the yoke wow. and pull bands and things. And so, yeah, it's my colors. It fits me. Yeah. I was just like, this is mine. So it came home with me and I wear it all the time. Yeah. It's awesome. awesome. It's beautiful. Yeah. Cool. And what are it's you wearing this, today, Jan? Oh, it's I just my very myself. simple, um, find, it's the find your fade wrap okay. shawl by andrea maury and mm -hmm. i just really liked i mean i i probably would not have put together these colors you know because i'm not that good at color things because there's actually a bunch of brown but there's also some i don't know if you can tell but there's actually some like oh, pink, some and pink and stuff purples. you know Is it pink? well yeah but I, you know i had help so <laughs> I'm not good at these things. I had help. It cheaper. looks great. It, it looks, looks great. great. It's yeah. thank you. It's either wow. my husband has to help, my patrons, uh, people in the knitting group, or my kids, or someone has to help me. I'm very insecure about choosing colors. <laughs> so, <laughs> you just have fun with it. Yeah. So again, welcome to the podcast, Breaking Yarn. Yeah. So first things first, you know, you talked about your colors and you know, the hazmat suit. And so people are going to make that connection between, and I already messed it up in the intro. <laughs> people are going to make the connection between your business name and your location in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. So tell us why you chose your company name to be Breaking Yarn. Yeah. So obviously, um, I guess the elephant in the room is that I am inspired by Breaking Bad. And that uh -huh. took place in Albuquerque. It wasn't just filmed here. It was like in Albuquerque, like the street names they use, the locations, it's all in Albuquerque um, and or surrounding areas. Right. Um, so obviously I drew inspiration from that. It was an amazing show. Have either of you watched the show? Oh, yeah. I've watched some of it. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, I have a horrible memory. So like I could go back and watch it and be like, wow, I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the same when I rewatched the series too. Like 
I'm like, oh yeah. gosh, I forgot that happened. Yeah, I do have a sense of what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a combination of being in Albuquerque, being a Breaking Bad fan, but then also in 2018 when I first started dyeing yarn and I was thinking about, you know, do I want to sell it online? Do I want to do all that? Mm-hmm. I started to think about what would set me apart from other indie dyers. Right. Um, right. And so I was like, man, nobody's really doing like a, like a company that's like inspired by a show or mm-hmm. a movie or something like that. I know there's like little collections that happen that indie dyers uh, do. Like uh-huh. I'll do like a girl Gilmore girls collection or right. something like that. But I was like the entire company to be like based on it. <laughs> I know it's like kind of crazy and I made this nice little box for myself, but um, it's just, <laughs> I don't know. It just felt right. Like yeah. I was standing in my kitchen dying yarn ironically. And I was like, and I, and I also the other portion of it is that I break colors in the dye pot. Oh, okay. So there's two facets of it. The majority of it is that it's breaking bad inspired but I also like to break colors, kind of like this one's breaking violet. Ooh. So this is actually all one color. But the way that I I dip dye and wait until all the colors exhaust, and then you can only get like blues instead of purples. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a like a wow. A so that's a cool technique. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and have like lots of different ones. This is a blue. Oh, I want that. But it comes out like there's only totally like my colors and dark blues and light blues. So it's it's fun as long oh. as I can get more more than two colors. I I call it a broken color. Yeah, nice. that's really cool. Yeah, that is awesome. so it's a fun fun little addition there to the so name. Some of your... That's why I was like, it just feels right, like all of it together. So <laughs> some of your color names are very obvious. Like hazmat suit is yellow, obviously, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But yeah. then you have like colors named after the characters. Uh-huh. And I'm curious how you settle on what their color or colorway should be. Yeah. So Breaking Bad in general, like if you look up um the color theories in Breaking Bad, it's actually very heavily um inspired by colors. Ben Skilligan was like he's like a mastermind <laughs> of colors and if you notice like if you watch Jana you need to watch the whole series. <laughs> but um if you if you notice like the characters will always wear like similar colors okay. depending on like who they are, right? So like Skylar, so I know one of the questions was like about Skylar. She's like a light blue because in the first like several seasons, she only wears like baby blue colors. That's all she ever wears. And it signifies like loyalty. um, And she's very loyal to Walter. That's the main character in the show. And that's she's um, she's his spouse. So um, I try to I pay attention. I do a lot of research. I pay attention to what they're wearing, what colors, what colors are their like themes. Uh Marie Schrader, I didn't pull her off the wall, but she's purple. And in the show, like literally they went so overboard. It was so funny though, because everything she wears, everything in her house, her tea kettle, her curtains her pillows on her bed like literally everything in her house is purple <laughs> Jana, oh. is that what your house is like are you so no, no. no I'm very like neutral <laughs> neutral but and then Walter <laughs> Walter's that color of like the gloves for which one Walter? Walter oh Walter so his so his colorway is green and I did that based off of like early seasons uh-huh. of Walt. Okay. And then if you'll notice, um, here, let me just grab. Yeah. Oh, we get a better look at this sweater too. Sorry, I can't, <laughs> I can't not show it too. So Walt is this like green color. Oh, and that's yeah. based on like early seasons of Walt, right? Where he was wearing like a, like a green button down in his whitey tighties <laughs> with oh, the RV. Yeah. Right. So it's like a green, right? And then as seasons go on, he changes into Heisenberg. And in my opinion, and this is getting kind of deep on the stuff, but in my opinion, I did mostly black, but like 20% of it is still this Walter White green. Yeah. Because at the end, I don't think Walt was completely gone. That's just my 
okay opinion on that so he he kind of morphed right so now there's two colorways that are both kind of walt but one is a darker version of him Nice. Ooh, interesting fascinating oh I, I try, and i'll try not to give away like spoilers or anything for people who yeah. haven't seen it, but no that's cool i get that's... so excited i'm sorry yeah <laughs> did you have any um did you do any colorways having to do with better call saul or are you really just keeping it to breaking bad yeah so eventually i would love to cover better call Saul too. Um, Mm -hmm. I did do a, um, Saul Goodman colorway and I have a Jimmy McGill colorway planned too. I just haven't pulled the trigger on coming out with it yet because then I Uh feel like I'm really crossing over and there's still like big colorways I want to come out with first before I do any of that. Okay. I definitely have plans to expand, but I still have a long list of Breaking Bad colorways I got to come out with first. (laughs) Well, it sounds like it was a fantastic shop idea. It's not like you haven't, you certainly haven't exhausted your possibilities. Yeah. No. And the, I think the exciting thing is just from being like a netter is that like the color combinations are endless, right? Like I come out with a new color and now it just changes how much, like what now, what can you make, you know, and the color Mm -hmm. combinations that you can put together. So even though they're like the same colors all the time, basically, um, the combinations that you can make. Right. And your interpretation of, you know, what you thought with Walter at the, towards the end, you know, that's really cool to put your own spin on it like that and Mm -hmm. what you think happened. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's neat. That's really and I cool. pulled people too. I was like asking people how much do you think Walt was gone all the way or how much of him was left? I pulled people who watch the show and like even um I'm a I'm a consignee at the Breaking Bad store in Old Town oh, cool. and wow. um for my yarn. And so I would always ask the the owner, they're like Sue, I mean they're so into Breaking Bad. It's crazy they have a museum <laughs> and everything, but um I would ask him too because I know like he knows so (laughs) (laughs) that's neat that's really cool so McKaylee you also have some really cool themed merch and notions that also tie into the show do you want to tell us about those yeah sure so um I started branching out a little bit but still trying to stay on theme um so recently what I've just added are some little notion bowls um and they're all either green or a or a green fade so that it's kind of representation of the Breaking Bad um you know like logo yeah. of the Breaking Bad um and then I have some um Kitchener stitch instructions on little like beakers <laughs> That's so I'm cool. trying to, and then like even some like project bags that my friend Danielle from Midwest Stitches made for my shop that are like the periodic table and like chemistry beakers and like just chemistry type themes. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so it's kind of fun to carry those over into my shop as well. Yeah. Um, one of the things that for since you mentioned the merch, one of the sayings you'll see in there is um, I am the one who knits. And that comes from the show too. So Walt, um, in one of the episodes, he says, I am the one who knocks. And um, it was a very intense moment actually in the show. Um, But I I don't know why all of a sudden it just came to me. I am the one who knits. And I was like, (laughs) oh my God, like I'm I'm doing this. And so I put it on t-shirts and I even made, last year I made project bags that said that. And I actually like, I got um, some project bags made for me and then I added like the wording and like my logo and everything and it was very labor intensive so I probably won't do that again but Mm -hmm. uh, yeah so you'll see that um, that phrase on some t-shirts and stuff too. That's cool and just a reminder for viewers we'll put links to all your shop and your social media and all that stuff down below in the video description. Yeah go have a look it's really fun stuff. Thank you. Cool. I hope to expand it too, but you know, it's not my day job. So I'm actually an HR manager. (laughs) So, you know, the time that I get to spend on breaking, breaking yarn, I try to spend it wisely. Sure. Sure. So since we're talking about the show, obviously Mm -hmm. you've, I mean, it's a, 
maybe it's a fun thing to watch while you're knitting. Maybe not. Depends on how intense it is and how difficult your pattern is. But right. you know, certainly just your round and round plain vanilla sock or whatever. So what other shows can can you recommend or audiobooks or like what other things do you enjoy? Because we're asking everyone because, you know, we like to compile a list of good recommendation. You know, I do. Yeah. So I think I, I don't know if I watch a variety of things. Um, Obviously I would recommend Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul and El Camino, but um, I mean, I've gotten sucked into some of the reality TV stuff, Uh um, like 90 Day Fiance. I (laughs) I know, I know. I couldn't stop watching it. I don't know why, but there was a girl from Albuquerque on this last season. So I was like, oh, like, I want to see what they show of Albuquerque. Right. Um, Yeah, that's your excuse. Yeah, it was kind of intriguing from that perspective, but... um, Hey, I have no judgment. I have a few trash TV shows I like to watch. (laughs) And then I kept kept hearing people talk about Love is Blind on Netflix. And Uh so I was like, let me just start with the the most recent season. And that sucked me in right away, too. Uh Um, But also reality TV. Um, Non-reality TV, I really like murder documentaries. (laughs) I know that... I know that's uh, that's actually not that uncommon for knitters to like murder documentaries, but yeah. I just finished Dahmer and I'm I have one episode left of the Dahmer tapes. Um, I just find it really interesting to know like what yeah. happened to these people that made them murderers. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, um, there are so many of those. Not so many. I have watched several of those sort of murder documentary kind of things or like whatever. For some reason, I cannot bring myself to watch the Dahmer one. I don't know. I'm just like, that one I think is going to freak me out. It, it it threw me for a loop at first. So my personal trainer at the gym was like, oh, you have to watch Dahmer. And when I started it, I was like, oh, this is like a show. I was very oh. thrown off. I was expecting like documentary style. And it was uh-huh. a, it was an actual show with Peter. I Evans. didn't know I that. Like, Oh, so I had to stop. I had to stop the first episode because I wasn't. I don't feel like I was in the right like headspace to watch that. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I was able to kind of come around, and they actually did a really good job with the show. So yeah, good to know. Yeah. Um. So kind of that's like a mix of things. Yeah. <laughs> Reality TV, Breaking Love Bad, is Blind then- to murder documentaries. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, breaking bad in between. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And then um, I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't read a ton. Mm -hmm. Um, I am reading a book right now called Hero on a Mission. It's just about finding um, purpose in your life. Um, And it talks about four different types of, um, like, not personalities, but just like categories that you can put yourself into. Like if you're Mm -hmm. a victim or if you're a hero or you're a guide or you're a villain mm-hmm. um and just kind of like how to just how to find purpose in your life i'm just i'm just on chapter 3 so i have a lot to read still but yeah. i'm finding it very interesting and good um yeah cool yeah so i don't know if those are great recommendations but <laughs> sure. I think they sound good yeah great sure. i'm going to check out a few of those is there anything coming up for Breaking Yarn in the new year that you can share with us? Yeah, um, I have, I'm going to have some collaborations happening, but um, I think the biggest thing for me right now is that I'm going to be moving soon. Mm-hmm. Um, so probably by the time this airs, this wall will be gone. Um, but so I think that's the biggest thing for me right now is that I'll be moving. I'm actually going to be getting a studio space finally. Nice. Um, so I'll be able to have a dedicated space to dye yarn and not have to do it in my kitchen. Yay. I know it drives my husband crazy when he comes down and I just have like pans and pots and things yeah. and yarn and things soaking everywhere. And he's just like, ah, like, where am I going <laughs> to heat up my food? I just want to um, make popcorn. <laughs> I know, I know, it's sad. So I'm like, I'm excited to get my own like dedicated space too. But you're moving, you're staying in, in the Albuquerque area. Yeah, I'm okay. staying in Albuquerque, just moving to a different house um, that provides us a little bit more space nice. for that type of stuff. We, I mean, with working from home too, like my husband works from home now too. I work from home. Like we just weren't anticipating needing to have 
offices. Right. And he needs to have an office with a door because he ha- he's just in meetings all day. Sure. So it just kind of changed our need, I guess, for yeah. a different house. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. You've been a ton of fun to hear about your colorways and what inspires all that. That's a lot of fun. Thank you for taking the time to come on the podcast. Good to meet you, McKaylee. Thanks. Nice to meet you both.